So again, just to reiterate again, this is the Seneca College in New York U Liberal Arts University Transfer and Arts and Science Transfer presentation. My name is Kren Alyofsky and I'm the Transfer and Mature Recruitment Officer here at York University. And joining me is my colleague, Adam Duncan from the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. Hello, Adam, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us, Kren. Perfect, so we're gonna start off with a land acknowledgement again. As this meeting is virtual and we're not all gathered in the same space, we recognize that this land acknowledgement may not be for the territory that you're currently on. And we ask if this is the case that you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory that you are on in its current treaty holders. York University recognizes that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. They are known as Tokoronto, and this area has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, as well as the Huron Wendat. It is now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities, and we acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and this territory is subject of the Dish With One Spoon, Wampum Bell Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. So again, uh, my name is Kran Alyovsky. I am the Transfer Mature Recruitment Officer here in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment at York University. My email address is cranally at york.ca. Again, we will have some time at the end of the presentation for questions and answers, but if there's anything you think of, you know, after this presentation or you want to reach out, please don't hesitate to um, please contact me via email. Um, and on the right of the screen, you'll see there is a link tree. And if you use the camera app on your phone, you can scan this QR code and you'll get access to all of the helpful links and web pages to help you better navigate our website. And uh, anyone who wants to reach out, uh, they're welcome to do so. You can reach out to me directly at aduncan at yorku.ca with any questions specific uh, to the faculty. Uh, you can visit our, sorry? No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You can uh, go ahead and visit our uh, website, discover.laps.yorku.ca. You're going to find videos that describe all of our programs. Uh, so if you want more information, you can go there. Uh, and if you can't remember my email, goyork at yorku.ca is always the best way to reach out. Um, there's a variety of staff and recruitment officers who staff that email, and you can ask uh, just about any question you have about liberal arts professional studies there. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. And thank you for being here. So we will get started on talking a bit more about our campuses. So you're all probably familiar with our Kiel campus. Again, we do share campus with Seneca College as well, who are located in our same area. And Kiel is our largest and main campus. It also houses the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. On the left of the screen is our Glendon campus, and they are located in Midtown Toronto. They're a much smaller campus with only about 2,700 students. And uh, the unique thing about Glendon is that they offer a bilingual and multilingual education. So you can take your specific program in English. However, you can also study um, French alongside your studies in order to graduate with a level of bilingualism. So again, if you wanna work in education, if you wanna work for the government, anything like that, um, Glendon might be a good place for you. And on the right side of the screen, we have our upcoming Markham campus. Uh, expected to open in 2023, and this is focused on um, entrepreneurship and technology. So again, um, all great options. It just depends on what your future academic goals are. And today, for the purpose of this presentation, we are going to be more focused on our Kiel campus and what our Faculty of Liberal Arts has to offer you as a faculty. And again, so pursuing your passion at York and how to find your program. So the Liberal Arts and Professional Studies faculty is the largest faculty we have here at York University with a variety of different programs ranging from uh, business commerce, the BCom, to social work. Um, I know some students have questions about that. Communications, law and politics, 
business and IT as well, among many others. And the best thing about liberal arts is students do have the ability to double major or major minor. They can also add certificates to their programs as well. Now, Adam is the expert in this area. So a bit later in the presentation, he will go more in depth on what they offer in liberal arts and, you know, it'll help you sort of narrow down what might be the right program for you. So again, the best part about York is really you can make your degree your way, whether again, it's double majoring or major minoring. We also have a variety of different international exchange programs. Um, and apart from that, we also have one of the best Bachelor of Education programs. So again, if you're interested in being a teacher, you may be interested in the consecutive education program. And in addition to this, given that we are the third largest university in all of Canada, we also have many pathways to graduate programs. So whether these are graduate programs at the master's level, or you wanna go on to the PhD level, or maybe even pursue a graduate diploma. In addition to this, again, as I mentioned, we have over 50 plus undergraduate certificate programs. Some of those are listed down below, um, and there's many more in addition to that, again, Certificates are great to add on to your degree if you want to gain sort of a level of expertise in a specific area. And again, they look really great on a resume. So how does the college transfer process work? Well, typically you need to have completed at least a semester or more of full-time college studies. And the minimum GPA that's required for the majority of programs from Seneca College, if you want to transfer to York, is a 3.0 or a B or a 70%. Now, some specific programs may require a higher GPA, um, or again, we encourage a higher GPA given that they might be more competitive and therefore we get more applicants and so you want to stand out academically. Now, the general transfer credit pre-assessment um, for college students who want to join us. So if you've completed a two-year diploma, which is about four terms, you'd be eligible to receive 30 credits. And 30 credits at York equals to about one year of studies. If you've completed a three-year advanced diploma, which is um, six or more terms, typically you'd be eligible for 42 credits. Now, the great thing about um, the partnership between Seneca College and York is that we do have a transfer articulation agreement. So what this means is if you're again, graduating from the liberal arts transfer or the arts and science transfer, graduates with an overall B or 3.0 will be considered for admission and granted up to 36 transfer credits. So again, instead of getting the 30, you are getting six more credits, which can typically equal at least an entire course. Again, and this is for when entering a BA or a Bachelor of Science program. And again, as we mentioned, some programs are more competitive, for example, the BCom. So again, we do recommend you have as high of a GPA as possible. Typically the reason for this is also that we do offer automatic entrance scholarships. So again, there's a lot of incentive when it comes to, you know, trying to apply with um, a GPA that's as high as possible. Now, all applicants will be granted three additional transfer credits for each YKC and YKL course achieved with a minimum grade of C for a total of 12 additional transfer credits for a total of 48 credits in total. So again, um, 30 credits at York typically equals about one year of studies. And again, 60 credits will be two full years of studies. However, 40 credits is still a lot of credits to gain from the college level to the university level. So typically you would enter university at the end of um, your first year and going into your second year. Um, so again, this will significantly shorten your time that you have to spend at university in order to attain a bachelor's degree. Now, if you choose to apply to a different program um, from the Liberal Arts University Transfer Diploma, you may still be admitted if you meet their admission requirements and have the prerequisites. Um, you may also receive 36 to 42 transfer credits, but again, please keep in mind it is still dependent on how applicable the transfer credits would be to the program that you're applying to. And again, for more information on that, um, we always encourage you to use as many resources as possible. And there's a great um, webpage on the Seneca College website on pathways and a guide to York University. So how do you apply? Well, your first step would be again to review admission requirements. So all program specific requirements, including supplementary applications, um, if they're applicable to the program of choice, 
can be found on our website, and that site is yorkie.ca slash program search. And um, again, your second step would be to apply by the deadline. Now, if you're interested in applying for the summer term, typically you're looking to submit your application to us by April 1st. And if you're looking to apply for September 2022, again, we, the you know, the deadline does say July 15th, but please note that the earlier you apply and get in your initial application, the earlier we know that you have an interest in transferring to York. Um, typically, after you submit your initial application, you do have several months to get in transcripts, you know, whether you're finishing up your semester and you're waiting to receive marks, or if there are specific prereqs that you're, you might be missing that you need to complete, you know, you do have time to get in those documents um in the next few months so we wouldn't recommend waiting until we would not recommend waiting until um you know the spring or the summer to apply for september the best time to apply is typically right now so again um, we encourage you you put in your applications as soon as possible now when it comes to programs that are much more competitive um such as the bachelor of social work Again, you want to submit your supplementary documents by February 22nd for that program for September 2022. So again, you'll notice that deadline is much, much earlier. Um, and then again, all of your other you know, documents that may be outstanding, whether it's final grades, can come in to us um, once you receive them. Uh, typically, you can just notify your school or a lot of them, given the fact that We've been in a pandemic, have offered e-transcripts be, um, you know, submitted directly from the institution to uh, the school you're applying to. So you could provide um, Seneca College with my email directly and they can send me your updated grades whenever you receive them. So we'll go in the next few slides, we're going to go a bit more in depth on how to apply and what these three steps really entail. So as I mentioned, the first step would be to check the admission requirements and the prerequisites. So when you visit our website, the, the, when you look up the program search webpage, typically this is what um, that will look like. And now when you're looking up, for example, the prerequisites for the commerce program, um, again, you'll want to select that your academic status is that you're attending or have attended college. And down below, you'll see the um, admission requirements and prerequisites that are required for the BCom. So typically you're looking to have an overall 3.3 average. Um, if you do have a three at the college program, we still encourage you to apply. However, keep in mind the higher the average for more competitive programs, um, the better your chances are. Now, in addition to this, there is a high school level prerequisite that is required. Um, and this needs to be needs to have been taken within the last five years. Um, in order for you to be eligible to apply to the program. And that is grade 12 university level advanced functions. And now for Seneca students specifically, if you've taken math for finance and math for statistics in your program, then you'll most likely be exempt from needing MHF for you. Um, so you definitely wanna check with your academic advisors on that. Typically those two courses, the combination of those two courses is what acts as the um, fulfillment of the MHF for you, grade 12 university math course. Now, another example um, of admission requirements and prerequisites is for the social work program. So again, when you look up the social work program, again, you're gonna see that you need an overall 3.0 GPA, um, and that's overall your GPA in your college program. And again, the initial application deadline for this program, given that it's a bit more competitive, is January 15th, 2022. Um, and that's when you want to get in your initial application, either through the Ontario University Application Center, if you're applying to more than one university, or simply just directly on our York U um, application if your heart is set on York and you only want to apply to York. Now, as I mentioned, the supplementary application deadline, and that's to submit all required um, supporting documents, including references, needs to be submitted by February 22nd. Um, and again, when you visit our website, if you look up um, the admission requirements on the program search, um, in red, you'll see that these documents are accessible and can be downloaded to your computer, and they include all the next steps that you need in order to submit your supplementary application to the School of Social Work. 
So again, high school prerequisites. Now, let's say that for whatever reason, there's a program you're interested in that requires high school or prerequisites that you're missing. Not to worry. Um, if they're missing or outdated, when I say outdated, they need to be they need to have been taken within the last five years. However, again, if they are outdated or missing, you can take them via any online accredited or in-person um, day or night schools. And a good option that's online is the ILC.org, which is accredited. Many students use this, which is why we um, use it as an example. Again, let's say you wanna apply for a program to start school in September um, and uh, you're missing a prerequisite, please still apply and complete your initial application. That initial application does not request any documents from you or any transcripts or any proof of completed prerequisites. It just shows your, your um, initial interest in your program of choice and provides us with your contact information so that we can start a file with you with us. So again, all of your prerequisite, completed prerequisites, um, transcripts with um, marks coming in either midterm marks or final marks, and any other documentation we require from you can come in after that initial application is submitted. So again, you can still apply right now. And then again, please contact me if you do plan to enroll in a, um, a learning center to complete those prerequisites. And I can leave that note on your file so that our admissions office knows um, that specific prerequisite is in progress um, and they can wait for marks in order to um, do a review. So again, you can still apply now and that completed prerequisite, typically one prerequisite takes about one to two months to complete. Um, and again, you can provide that to us in um, the upcoming winter term. That should be fine. So what do we do to support your success at York? Well, we're really big advocates for mental health and wellness. So again, at York, we have one-on-one -on -one counseling, we have group counseling. We also have really great peer mentors. Um, and again, a lot of these same resources were available to you at Seneca College. And again, we do encourage you to take advantage of them at York University as well. Peer mentors are typically upper level students um, that have done really well in their courses and can help you through the same courses so that you do well as you do well also. And we also have really great academic advisor, advisors in all of our faculties. Um, in addition to this, we also have financial advising if you want some guidance with that and are a really great career center that is accessible to you up to two years after you graduate. I know I took advantage of it. Um, they helped me prepare for my graduate school applications and they also helped me um, refresh my resume and my cover letter. So again, really great resources we have at York. It's just up to the student to really take advantage of them. Now, when it comes to financial aid, I talked about this briefly, but we do offer renewable and regainable scholarships. Um, these are automatic entrance scholarships, which are applied to your um, file. And again, they're depending on the GPA that you apply with. Typically, they start at $500. And again, they are renewable. We also have merit-based high-value awards and bursaries. And again, these can ap be applied for on our Student Financial Services website. Um, there's a bunch of different scholarships that you'd be eligible to apply for through there that require a short application. In addition to this, Students who are full-time can apply to OSAP as well. And again, as I mentioned, we do offer financial advising. Now to conclude this admissions portion of the presentation, again, one thing I encourage you to do is if you visit go.yorku.ca forward slash events, we have a variety of really helpful um, webinars, whether they're from the faculty level, a student perspective, or program specific to help you learn more about the program that you may be interested in and what it's like to be a student at York. So I encourage you to check those out as well. And again, just a reminder, if you do wanna get in touch with me, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me using the link tree link at the bottom of the screen there. Um, and again, my email is crenali at yorku.ca. So next, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Adam Duncan, again, the recruitment officer in the faculty of liberal arts and professional studies. And he'll talk a bit more about what they have to offer you. 
Fantastic. Thanks so much, uh, Krenna. I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you for uh, either being here in a uh, virtual uh, person to, to view the presentation, or if you're watching this on the recording uh, that happened afterwards. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the programs that we offer in liberal arts professional studies, um, because there are a lot of them. And sometimes students don't have a good picture of what all those uh, programs are. And I'm going to talk about the ways we support students in making a degree uh, that's right for them. Uh, uh, you know, Kren had mentioned earlier, uh, your degree, your way, and that really is true for our faculty. And finally, I'm going to talk about some of the ways we help you achieve uh, your goals. Um, I'm not sure how we want to uh, do this slide. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here are all of the different programs. Uh, Kren had mentioned uh, the different uh, super categories, so culture and history and law and politics and social science. Uh, but you can see within each one of them, uh, there's uh, at least half a dozen, uh, if not uh, multiple dozen uh, programs uh, that are offered. Each one of these programs is not the end of the story either. Uh, for some of them, they have sub-disciplines within them. Um, so you can study uh, humanities, absolutely. Uh, but you can look at different areas within uh, humanities. So you can look at different cultural studies. You can look at different literature studies. You can look at classical studies. Uh, so there is a lot of different um, options. Uh, one of the beautiful things about our degree is the ability to mix things together. Um, because, listen, you want to study something that is unique to you. Uh, and we understand that. And you're not going to find that uniqueness necessarily in one program. Uh, so I often use a variety of examples uh, from real students, um, but we can uh, pick some at random uh, based on some of the chat things that I've seen. Uh, so I've seen uh, students who are interested in social work. Um, so obviously that is a, an incredibly noble field. It's also a field with a lot of sub areas, whether you want to work in rehabilitation, if you want to work in uh, different types of family support. Um, so there are a lot of areas in social work you can go into. Um, and those areas could benefit from some other uh, knowledge bases, some other learnings. So for example, if your interest is uh, in working with um, families uh, then and working in that kind of support, then absolutely a minor in something like psychology, which you'll notice you don't see on the list and it will segue in just a second, but you could add a minor of psychology to that um, degree in, in social work. Uh, or maybe you want to uh, look at rehabilitation or uh, you want to support people uh, who are uh, marginalized by communities. So maybe a minor in human rights and equity studies um, or even taking uh, courses and certifications from our Black Canadian Studies uh, program would be something that's right for you. Maybe you want to work in the penal system and that sort of uh, rehabilitation, uh, in which case uh, you may be very interested in taking some of our sociology or our social science uh, programs. Uh, the point I'm getting at is that it's all about making something that's right for you. And I said I'd segue into uh, something else. It doesn't have to be a program just within our faculty. In fact, we are incredibly flexible for students who want to reach beyond uh, our faculty. Uh, so one of the ways we see that is, you know, psychology is always a popular minor to add to our programs, but also we had students who are interested in going on to be teachers. So for some of you who want to be teachers, you know that teachables are uh, in demand depending on the teachables. Uh, and so you may want to mix things like science or mathematics uh, as, a, as a second major or a minor. Absolutely okay with us. We, we have that happen all the time and we encourage students to create those combinations. So I want to take a minute to look at the way the degrees are offered so you can get a better understanding about how you can mix and match. Uh, and so we're going to just uh, briefly talk about the five different types of degrees. There are only five, so it's pretty easy. I'll let you peruse what you see on the screen as I'm talking, um, but I will give you the sort of Cole's Notes version so you can tune out all that writing below uh, or examine it at your ledger. Uh, so the basic degree is a three-year arts degree. It's 90 credits. It's uh, what a lot of students choose who want to be sort of in and out in the shortest amount of time. Uh, is it less than an honors degree? No, it's a, it's a bachelor's degree. It's a great degree. Um, does it limit you? In some cases, yes, some professional schools will require an honors degree, some uh, different, so for example, if you're going to go into teaching, you get paid more if you have an honors degree, you get paid more if you have a specialized honors degree, depending on the school board you work for. Um, and it's going to open a lot more doors when you're going into the honors. So what does honors add? Essentially, it adds uh, another year uh, of fourth year classes, which are seminar classes. They're sort of like a 
pre-grad school. Uh, they uh, in, invite you to share ideas in a, in a more communal setting, to have the conversations rather than just rote learning. Uh, really exciting. And actually, I see a lot of students who take their third year courses and they decide, you know what, I, I can't see not doing the next level because it's so fascinating. I want to take these courses. Uh, some programs are honors only. So for example, uh, social work. Uh, if you're interested in social work, it's honors only. Why? Because those fourth year seminars are so critical because that's where you get your specialization and that's where you get your placement. Uh, so what's a specialized honors? Well, sometimes we have programs that are uh, either by student choice, so intensively focused on the program, or by design, they're just uh, too intense. They can only focus on one subject. So unfortunately, you can't major or minor, or maybe fortunately, if all you really love is history, if all you uh, truly love is human rights, um, you may want to specialize in those areas and focus all of your attention and it allows you to take more seminars, more courses, and indeed, believe it or not, more specializations in that area uh, so that you could pick up a couple different areas of uh, human rights or of whatever you uh, focus on. One thing I will mention is the Commerce Honors is a specialized only program. Why is that? Well, again, more specializations. In commerce with York University, you're going to learn a little bit from accounting, a little bit from finance, a little bit from marketing. Uh, and so there isn't really room while you're learning all those different specializations to pick up a major or minor. And so when you do a commerce uh, honors degree here at York University uh, with our faculty, it's going to be a specialized degree. Uh, I think honors major and minor and honors double major speaks for itself. What is the difference between a major and a minor when you're deciding between the two? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, a double uh, major means that you're adding two complete uh, and, and full expertise areas. So that's really what university does is it makes you an expert, a level of expert, maybe not a supreme expert, but certainly a level of expertise in a subject. Um, and so the honors double major gives you two of those. Uh, so you can say confidently that you are at a level of expertise in both the subjects. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of studying. That's a lot of uh, um, intensive uh, research, a lot of paper writing on two subjects. It stresses some students out to think about it. It excites other students to think about how much work they'll be doing in the fields they love. Uh, so some students, they don't want to dive all the way into that second subject, uh, but they still want to know enough about it to be able to speak about it, um, you know, uh, maybe not authoritatively, or, uh, but, but they want to speak intelligently on the subject. And so they take a minor. A minor identifies that this isn't just you've dabbled in a couple of courses, but you have taken uh, a progression of courses to become uh, very knowledgeable in the subject. That's the essential difference. Um, and when you're applying to graduate school, there isn't really a difference. Um, you will find differences uh, mostly in uh, professional schools or depending on the kind of career you want to go into. You want to show you're an expert in certain areas. Uh, so then we have one other option that I'd like to talk about, which I think is on the next slide which are certificates. We offer two different types of certificates. What's a certificate? Well, a certificate shows a direction of study. Uh, so unlike a major where you're learning expertise and we're allowing you to choose specializations, uh, there are some subjects that are uh, so interdisciplinary, they cannot be held by a single uh, subject. So for example, we have a certificate in Black Canadian Studies. Black Canadian Studies is not just a question of history. Although if you were going to study Black Canadian studies without looking at history, there'd be something missing. Uh, and so we ask that you take a little bit of history, uh, but also there's other things involved like human rights, like culture, uh, you know, like literature. Um, all of these different things together uh, encompass not just a single uh, degree or, or major, um, but a wide variety uh, of areas of interest. And so the certificates will spell out a list of maybe, I don't know, just spitballing here, 42 courses, let's say. Uh, then it will say, listen, you need to take obviously an introduction to Black Canadian Studies. That's going to be required if we're going to give you a certificate in it. But then we will allow you to take courses from these different areas, from different subjects. Um, and if you take all these courses, um, it will qualify you as a certificate of understanding. Now, why do students do that? Why not just take a major? Well, you do it because it actually, um, if you're a history student, 
you can take primarily history courses within there, maybe one or two courses outside of history, uh, and you can achieve a Black Canadian uh, Studies certificate or any of the other certificates we offer. And there are many human rights, conflict resolution, things like that, uh, anti-racism practice certificate. Um, so you can take these courses while you're completing your other requirements, um, and it doesn't cost you any extra money or the extra credits. Uh, it just shows that within the area of study you were in, like history or humanities, or uh, any other program that you focused on uh, courses that were related to the certificate area. And so when you graduate, you get your degree and you get your certificate. So what's a professional certificate? Well, those are our business uh, uh, programs. We offer professional certificates, things like marketing and accounting and human resource management. Some students want to add that on uh, to their degree. They really love a subject like economics, or they really love a subject uh, like social science, but they do want to also get a professional certificate in, say, human, uh, human resource management. The professional certificates are the same, uh, except that usually there's not a lot of crossover. So it's almost like taking almost like taking a double major, except that it does cost you a little extra time and a little extra money because you do have to take at least 18 unique credits. That means 18 credits or uh, three full courses uh, over and above the degree you're in. Why do we do that? That has to do with regulatory bodies. Uh, all of our business courses are registered with the Canadian Chartered Accountants or the American Marketing Association, and they require that students uh, have these courses that are not part of anything else, that they are taking it only for the purpose of um, achieving a accreditation. Um, and so uh, they do require um, sort of an extra half year uh, of study to get the professional certificates, but those are available. So now I want to switch modes uh, just a little bit, and I want to talk about student supports. I'm going to slow down for a second because I know I'm talking very fast, but this, this right now is very important. We understand that not every student who comes to liberal arts or professional studies has the same background, has had the same advantages, has the same abilities um, when they come into our faculty. But it is very important to us that all of you have the chance to achieve your goals and that we make a space of equality for all of you uh, to succeed. And so the way we do that is we invest a lot of money. York University in general does this. Um, we, uh, in particular, at our faculty do this very well. Uh, we invest a lot of money in student supports to equalize that playing field, to help you, no matter what your background, no matter what your history academically has been, no matter what your grades have been, uh, to help you succeed in what your goals and your dreams are. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways we do that, and so they're all on the screen, but I want to talk about them all a little bit individually, if, uh, if we could. So first, I want to talk about the LAPS Writing Center. Um, listen, I know you're all in college, so you've done some essay writing, and it can be rough. It can be rough coming out of grade 12, going into the college environment. Uh, the essays have a little extra requirement on them, um, and you may be nervous thinking about, well, university just adds the level up a little bit. Uh, so the bad news is, yes, you know, generally speaking, uh, essays are progressive. The higher up in university you go, the more difficult, the longer the essays become, the more is expected. The good news is the Liberal Arts Professional Studies Writing Center. This is open and free for all students in our faculty. Uh, all students at the university can actually access it. You can take an essay there before you've even written it. You receive the assignment from the professor. You don't know where to go. You don't know how to start. You can take that to them at the Writing Center. Uh, they will look at the assignment. They will help you formulate your arguments. They will help you uh, design a structure. They will help you with hints on where you could do some research, what you should maybe start to read. Um, you can do that in the middle of the essay. If you get stuck and you're like, all right, I've worked for six weeks and I'm ready. This 10-page essay, I've written two pages. And, and that's like your best effort is to write two pages. And that happens. Uh, and you can take them those two pages and we're like, listen, I started and I gassed out on page two. I don't know where else to go. They will help you expand your arguments, give you ideas of what you can research. Uh, generally speaking, it's a full grade point improvement. Uh, so that's one of the ways we will help you. You can also, sorry, I just want to say that you can also take it there after. It's not proofreading. They do all the same things, talk about argument, structure, research, um, but it, it's almost like having it pre-marked because our writing center is 100% staffed by professors. Uh, so it is a resource we give uh, to the students um, and we hope you take advantage of it. Complementing the LAPS Writing Center is the ESL Open Learning Center. 
Uh, I'm going to go very brief uh, over this. Um, it offers three different engagements. So one-to-one -one engagement with the tutorial sessions with a tutor. We have small group sessions where you can learn skills, where they cover little things like uh, presentation skills or conversational skills. That's one of my favorite uh, classes I run there um, is just how do you, how do you converse? Um, what's appropriate socially, uh, you know, when you're standing at a bus stop waiting um, or they do workshops where you want to learn more general skills like tips for writing essays or studying for exams. The important thing I want to note here is this is not language test dependent. I know you're all at college, so you're thinking, well, you know, there's no ESL requirement. It doesn't matter when you started learning English as a second language. Um, we are all at different stages in our learning process. We can always improve. Uh, my English communication can be improved. Um, this ESL Open Learning Center is there uh, for students to take advantage of, regardless of their background. If you feel you need help, if you feel you just want to check it out, uh, it is absolutely a great center for you to use. Uh, so I do want to talk just a little bit about, um, I thought Kren uh, touched beautifully on the this in, in Make It uh, the Degree Your Way, um, that we offer work placements to help augment uh, education. So a lot of you are hungry uh, for uh, placements and internships. We don't do co-op, we do internships because internships are paid and we do not believe in unpaid labor here in uh, liberal arts and professional studies. We offer them in a lot of different uh, lengths. So whether that's uh, a four month or one semester, uh, all the way up to 16 month. Why 16 months? That's like a year off. Well, um, some students prefer it. Some students want to get 16 months of experience in their internship, but actually some companies like that as well. So you may find with some very large companies that have a very large corporate culture, uh, they're going to invest in you by bringing you in as an intern, even though they're paying you, there's an investment in time. Uh, and they want to uh, see if you're a good fit and maybe uh, help you learn the corporate culture and, and hopefully entice you to come to them after graduation. So you will find that there are 16 month opportunities. Uh, we have uh, different work integrated learning, which is essentially where you're doing projects in a course, you're doing it for course credit. Uh, and we also offer them uh, globally, and that's down under study abroad. Um, but this has been really important in the pandemic. Uh, not all of our students are uh, necessarily based in Canada, and so they have connections in other countries. We can assist with internships there. Or maybe you yourself. I had a student who uh, was really interested in Germany and German culture, uh, and we ended up getting an internship uh, with um, like the Bundestag, I think, is the, the parliament uh, version in Germany. Um, and so she did an internship there. So that was really exciting. We can help with those kind of connections. Uh, but we do most of our work internationally, academically with other universities. So we send students all the time on academic exchanges. Um, sometimes they're for just a semester, sometimes it's for a full year. Uh, and my personal favorite of our international experiences are courses abroad, which is a fantastic way to uh, get a little bit of both worlds in terms of getting a summer school course, gaining some credits, and also maybe, ooh, I, I know this is being recorded, so I don't want to put this on record, but it is a bit of a vacation because you are going to another country. You are getting a guided tour by, you know, people who have a doctorate in the area, who are researching the area, whether that's visiting volcanoes with our disaster emergency management team, whether that's going to ancient Greece uh, with our classical studies team, whether that's going to London, England with our uh, uh, literature department to look at uh, Shakespearean and uh, Dickensian uh, sites. Uh, those are fantastic and they're extremely well-funded. We know, again, we're all about uh, finding equality and equity for students. Um, we know that not everyone uh, necessarily has the ability to travel uh, abroad. Um, and so we, we provide a lot of great scholarships uh, to help students afford that opportunity so you can take advantage of it. So uh, I think rounding out, I do want to say a quick word about our colleges because we work closely with them. What is a college at university? That's weird. It actually uses a very old system from England. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the history of it, but I will tell you this. It is a social division, not a division a social unification system. Um, basically, when you come to York University, uh, we know it's a big place. Uh, we're one of the largest universities um, in Canada. And we're also, Liberal Arts and Professional Studies is one of the largest faculties in North America. Um, so it can seem intimidating. And so we break students down by programs and by colleges to help you have a social uh, group that you'll, you'll know everyone in your college. 
um, or you'll you'll make friends in your college. Uh, you're free to switch colleges if you, if you uh, have friends in other colleges. But it's just it's a social thing that helps you uh, get more involved um, and feel uh, a little more at home and, and a little more in a, a community. Uh, so it's a really great advantage as well of York. And uh, we mentioned academic advising. I can't stress enough how good our academic advisors are in our faculty. They are truly top notch. Um, they really, we, we have a very large cohort of advisors. They're experts in all of our programs. Uh, they will help you with which courses you should take. How are you doing on your degree progress? How do you get to graduation? Um, if you want to change your degree, if you're thinking about adding a major minor, they can help you with that. If, and the, we hope this never happens, but sometimes things happen and you get in academic or personal difficulties, uh, they will help you with that too. Whether it comes to uh, making petitions um, or if you're having a disruption, you don't know what else to do, listen, don't panic and, and run away. Run to the advising office and say, this terrible thing happened, uh, what should I do? And they can help you put things on hold. They can help make sure that you uh, uh, don't end up uh, in a sort of dismal hole when you come back. They, they will level everything out and make things work for you uh, to the best of their ability. So please, please, please always visit your academic advisors. They are wonderful. So I think I said it before, uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, go York at yorku.ca is a great place uh, to reach out and uh, talk to us um, because that's so well staffed. I think our turnaround on it is around 24 hours um, usually. So um, it's a great place to ask your questions. You can always follow us on Twitter and Instagram at yorkulaps. Uh, and we also have uh, the program chat video library. So if you want to learn more about our programs uh, from professors talking about uh, the types of courses, the types of subjects, the type of questions you'll answer, uh, please uh, don't be afraid to visit that. Uh, and also, I hope to I hope we've convinced you that uh, liberal arts and professional studies is a place for you. And I hope uh, we see you in September. I think that's all I want to say about that. Thanks very much for the opportunity uh, to speak to you. And thank you, Kren, for inviting us here. Thank you so much, Adam. That was a wonderful presentation. I'm going to stop sharing our screen now so we can connect with the students. Um, again, um, hopefully you enjoyed the, both the admissions portion and the faculty specific portion, learning more about what liberal arts has to offer you as a faculty. Um, and now we'll look through the questions and again, we'll do our best to get through all of them. We do have about 15 minutes left in the presentation. Um, and again, for those that are asking, this is uh, being recorded um, and will be provided to you um, by our Seneca colleagues. Um, so let me look through here. So um, there's a question someone sent me if, if I could. Um, yeah, of course. So they were, they were interested in um, how do they know, you know, they're coming from college or they're coming from a previous program. How do they know what courses they don't have to take or what courses they should take once they come to York? And that's, that's a really great question that a lot of students have. Uh, so I'm going to just briefly cover the process. Um, what will happen is, uh, Kren had said earlier, you submit your transcripts. Uh, so that transcript immediately goes to an office uh, of assessment uh, where we have a variety of assessors who are familiar with both international and domestic schools. Um, they will do their magic uh, through a lot of different databases. Um, they may request some additional information from you, but generally speaking, um, they have the tools they need to make an assessment of your transcript and they will decide, hey, this course equals this course. We don't have an equivalent to this course. Um, and they'll create two lists. They'll create a list of courses that are equivalent, and then they'll create a list of courses we don't have equivalents for. They will then send that to the academic advisor. The academic advisor will look at it. They will decide if any of those courses that we have an equivalent for apply to the degree you're uh, taking, in which case they will mark them on a sheet, which we call a program checklist, and say, this is taken, this is taken, done. The other ones we don't have equivalents for, the, they will put it in what we call block credits. Uh, it, it literally is just a block on the sheet that they pop into that checklist. Uh, and then they will um, say, you don't have to do your general education, you don't have to do your outside major, and you don't have to do these two courses outside the major. So they will uh, tell you everything. So that, that is the method we use to when we're dealing with students who have transfer credits. Uh, I, I hope that's clear. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that process, Kren, or... No, that was great. Again, uh, just to reiterate, so 
after you apply and provide us with your transcripts, um, typically the transfer credit process gets sparked after you get admitted to your program. Um, so once that happens, our transfer credit assessor is able to look through all of the courses you've taken at the college level, and they will assess um, in a pre-assessment how many you're eligible to receive. So that pre-assessment will be provided to you on your offer letter. It'll be clearly stated there. And again, once you accept your offer, um, again, that sparks another process um, in the um, sort of chain of events, which will then have our transfer credit um, assessor go through all of the courses one by one and give you a final sort of amount of transfer credits you'd receive. So again, typically the pre-assessment is very accurate, um, but you never know if you still have some courses in progress, if you're finishing up a semester or anything like that, those will be um, reviewed again after you accept your offer. Um, and again, once we get your final transcripts. So all of those courses as well, we'll be able to, you'll be able to discuss that with an academic advisor as well. You can reach out to them after you're admitted if you wanna know exactly how the program structure would work with all the transfer credits you'd received. Um, yeah, Adam, go ahead. No, I was gonna tackle the um, question. Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. No, no, I, you'll have to tackle that. <laughs> no problem, is this Shireen's question? Yes. Perfect, okay. So when it comes to the liberal arts transfer or the um, arts and science uh, university transfer, typically um, it depends on, oops, sorry, typically it just depends on the programs you choose to go into. So the LAT is usually a direct sort of um, pathway, we could say, to transferring to the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. Um, when it comes to the arts and sciences, again, because there's more science specific programs in there as well, again, the Faculty of Science might be a good option for you. Um, the same as the Faculty of Health, if you're interested in anything like health studies, or perhaps you're interested in psychology, um, or maybe even kinesiology, which is a popular option. So again, typically you're eligible for the same amount of credits, um, depending on the faculty you wanna enter. But again, the key thing to remember here is that what's most important is how relevant your current college program is to the program you want to enter into university. So the more similar it is, the better. Um, the, again, the more similar it is, the more credits you would be eligible to receive. Um, and it looks like we have a question from Allison. Um, Allison is asking, what is a supplementary application versus an initial application? So um, that's a great question. Um, what I'm going to do briefly, hopefully we have some time. I'm actually just going to share my screen with you all for a second. Okay, so when you are applying to York University, typically this is the website you're gonna visit. It's simply just yorku.ca slash apply and it'll redirect to here. And again, down here is the initial application form. So again, if you're applying to York and other universities that you may be interested in, it's most cost-effective to apply through the OUAC, the Ontario University Application Center. And because you're transfer students, you're using the 105 application. I believe it's around $156 for three program choices at three different institutions. So you'll click through here, um, and that will direct you to the OUAC site. And again, you're using the 105 undergrad app. Now, if your heart is set on York, you only want to apply to York. Um, instead, you can use option two, which is the York University application. This fee is $130 and it gives you two program choices at York. So again, what you're going to select is apply now and you will be automatically redirected to the undergraduate application form. Now, again, as I mentioned, this is what is considered the initial application form, either whether it's through OUAC or through the York U app. Now, again, as you can see, we only ask you for general information, things like your name, your birthday, your email. Again, under your goal of study, um, you select the date you wanna start school. So let's say you wanna start school in September and you want to pursue maybe a degree in social work, let's say. Down here, you'll have your two choices of programs. So you'll click on the box, you can enter, let's say social work. 
And down here below, you do get a second option. Let's see your second choice is history, right? So you'll move on to the next area. Again, it's general information, citizenship and language, your address, your previous education. Here, you only have to list the names of the schools you attended and the years. So at this point, what I want you to notice is that we're not asking you to upload any documents. We're not asking you to upload any transcripts. This is just your initial application that starts a registration with us so that we know you're interested. So again, you'll go through to the end, you'll pay. And again, another reminder, if you're applying to more than one university, it's better for you to use the OUEC app, but it's a very similar process. It's just your general information. Um, and again, after you complete this initial form, um, typically it takes three to five business days for that to process. And then York will reach out to you directly with a York reference number, a link to our student portal, which is called MyFile, and instructions on how to use the student portal. And that portal is where you're gonna upload copies of your transcripts or any other documents we, we request from you. Now, when it comes to things like social work in general or programs that require a supplementary application, typically the program will reach out to you directly with um, a link to their supplementary forms. These are also typically available to you on our website. Um, Adam, is there anything you want to add in terms of, in regards to the supplementary forms or accessing them? Yeah, you no, know, I, well, I would just say, um, so there's a couple of questions about social work uh, that I, I will I will address because they're, they're pretty common uh, questions. Um, so first, is uh, York social work program competitive? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I'd love to say that we will take uh, everyone who's interested because I would love a world where we could uh, have as many people um, because social people interested in social work just tend to be, you know, the kindest and most caring people that I've met as, as students. So I would love to say yes. Unfortunately, uh, for a lot of reasons, it is a competitive program because um, we can only take in so many students. Uh, that's what we're essentially limited by the number of seats we have. Um, and we try to expand that. Uh, but the, for a variety of reasons, it's difficult to expand. Um, how competitive is it? Uh, well, we are extremely well renowned uh, in Ontario for social work. Um, and so a lot of students want to come here, um, not least of which because our placement program is just one of the best, uh, not only just in Ontario, um, but we have students globally who want to come and take advantage uh, of, of that. So um, it is fairly competitive. Um, should I apply to other universities? Uh, I, I have to leave that to you. Uh, I will never tell a student that uh, they should apply to another university in New York, but I will always tell students that they should follow their hearts. Um, so if that doesn't leave you to lead you to York, I'm sorry, like that, that makes me a little sad, but I totally understand. And I think that's what you should do. Uh, in terms of supporting documents, so the supporting documents for social work, there's a couple of different things that we ask for uh, college transfer students. Uh, one of them is sort of a, I think if they still do it, a statement of social justice. Um, then we, we ask for a reference, um, I believe, um, so we know what you've been doing, how, how you've been heading towards this goal. Um, however, it does change slightly year over year. And so, as Kren said, they will provide you with it. Um, and uh, you can always contact the department. Uh, the department actually has a fantastic, because social work is so specialized, um, they do a lot of the admission work. Um, so I'm going to post uh, um, the, the email address in the chat. So I'm just stuttering while I, I do that, and I apologize. Um, So it's, for those of you who are watching at home, it's L-A-P-S-S-O-W-K at yorku.ca. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you. Um, no, yeah, best to go to their uh, their website. Sorry, someone was just saying there's some, some links that might not go through. Uh, again, that's because they take down and change the supplementary documents. So always get it from social work. And if you can't find it, please email them, okay? Um, I think there's some other... Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a few other questions yeah. um, just in relation to, so if you're in a situation where you do not currently have a 3.0 GPA, maybe you're currently still taking courses, again, please don't let that discourage you, um, especially given when it comes to transfer and mature students, um, or again, students who are at the college level right now, we understand everyone's have different lived experiences and different um, sort of opportunities. 
So again, please don't let that discourage you. If you're close to the 3.0, um, we still encourage you to apply. In addition to your transcripts, what you could submit to us is um, an updated resume. So it doesn't have to be York specific or geared to York, but it could just be a resume you've used for maybe a part-time job or volunteer experience or any ways that you've gotten involved outside of class um, at Seneca College. Um, and now, in addition to that, you can also submit a one page personal letter to us, um, just explaining um, the circumstances for any extra extenuating circumstances or low grades you might've received. Um, any struggles that you've overcome, anything like that, this information stays confidential. Uh, again, one page maximum is enough, one to three paragraphs double spaced. And that letter can just share with us, um, again, why you're interested in pursuing this specific program, why you think York will help you um, achieve those academic goals, and any challenges you might have overcome um, and resilience you might have gained through your college program. So again, this is all meant to um, you know, strengthen your application. Um, and it, we again, as at York, we do do our best for our transfer students to make sure that we're doing a holistic review. So if in the case that you want a resume or a letter um, to be submitted, again, once you get access to your MyFile account with a reference number, um, after we email you, after submitting your initial application, you can reach out to me directly and I can add those requirements to your MyFile account so you can upload them. Um, but again, additionally, again, if you're currently taking courses, um, you know, don't worry. Typically, final admissions are given once we see your final grades. Um, and whether that happens closer to the spring, that's fine. Right now, we will see your midterms. Again, if we can't give you a conditional offer, we still will wait until we see your final grades. Hopefully, at that point, there's still um, space in the program and you will still be considered. Um, and I think there's a question here about summer school related to mm -hmm. um, accelerating for liberal arts. Yeah, I can talk about that a little. Um, so uh, when it comes to, uh, we do offer a summer semester, students are welcome to take that to accelerate their studies or to pick up studies. I would usually recommend that students actually use that to decrease their load. Um, so if they, uh, instead of taking five full courses through the year, you could take uh, maybe three and a half or four full courses and then pick up the remainder through the summer. Um, for students who are really uh, interested in, in sort of accelerating, you can do it. Although I just want to note, I see the question is coming uh, from one of our social work interested students. Uh, I would only do that if you've talked to the uh, advisor in the social work department first. Um, because of the placement program, things are a little... Um, uh, more organized, uh, a little more uh, delicate, if you will, in terms of rearranging things. Um, so make sure you always do that in consultation with a, an academic advisor if you want to uh, do any acceleration for your studies. Great question, though. Thank you. I think there's two more questions we'll address before okay. we wrap up. Um, first, um, Adam, you might know this. Could one major mm -hmm. in global health and French studies um, I guess maybe, or subjects that are available in LA and PS and Glendon, uh, can students do courses at both? So um, it's, it's up to Glendon, uh, I'll say that. For us, it's okay. For, for us, yes, as long as it, it fits, uh, it's okay. Um, I would be careful with Glendon uh, in terms of, I have had students in the past who have double majored in things with Glendon. Uh, the only reason I say be careful is because it can be uh, a 45 minute to an hour bus ride between the campuses. Uh, so be careful when you're choosing your courses. Uh, make sure, maybe do your Glennon courses one day and your Keel courses another. Uh, but when it comes to logistics of adding those two together, we are 100% okay with it. You just have to check with Glennon. Perfect, thank you. And um, again, final question here we'll address is, according to the Seneca website, students can be considered for admission at, to York after completing uh, two semesters. What's the process, um, I suppose, if a student doesn't complete a full diploma program or advanced diploma program? So again, you're still eligible to apply. Um, it's the exact same requirements which are required. So again, you're still going to need a 3.0 or a 3.3 for our more competitive programs. Um, and again, um, the caveat being that because you're transferring with less courses done at the college level, you would just be eligible for less transfer credit. So again, typically we can say 
um, you know, we'll review your transfer credits again. They can only be reviewed after you submit transcripts to us and if you're admissible. Um, and at that point, we will be able to give you um, in your pre-assessment an estimated amount of credits you would be able to receive. Um, uh, so again, that's basically the main, the easiest way to explain that. So again, you're still eligible to transfer. It's just, again, um, if you haven't completed a full diploma or an advanced diploma, you will just be, um, again, admissible if you meet the prerequisites and the GPA, but you'd be eligible for less transfer credit. Um, and again, it looks like we are sort of at the end of time right now. I really want to thank you all so much for investing some time to learn more about the transfer process to York University. Um, and Adam, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. It was so informative. Um, and it was great to hear about all the um, different uh, support resources and also um, experiential education opportunities students have um, in LANPS. Um, again, thank you so much for your questions. Hopefully, um, we were able to answer them to the best of our ability. If you do have any questions, uh, additional questions for us, we're just going to pop our emails in the chat again. Um, and again, we encourage you to reach out to us via email. Um, and I believe um, both Shireen and Philip should have access to this recording very soon. Um, I'll be able to send that to them today, and then they will be able to share that with you. Um, so again, I'm just also going to add my email to the chat. Um, and again, um, really excited for um, us to again connect if you need any other support. All right, thank you all so much and have a wonderful rest of day. Bye now. Be safe, everyone. Bye bye. Bye now. <laughs>